uh, I worked on uh, various projects uh, like the Adapto project and um, well I'm an ecologist also and so my um, uh, judging criteria will also be uh, about um, uh, environmental uh, impacts and um, uh, inclusion of co-benefits uh, in the design and also um, using uh, all kinds of co-benefits like for uh, public realms uh, uh, enhancement and uh, how to uh, to work for the community just not only to reduce risks but also to to uh, bring uh, some benefits to the community uh, like landscapes uh, environment also and last last but not least uh woot vote Yes, good Quality afternoon. <laughs> yeah, the, Wout or Walter, that is easier for the non-Dutch. I'm uh, Wout de Vries, uh, currently at Rijkswaterstaat, colleague of Leon. Uh, already for some 20 years involved in the Kring, one of the pre-pre-predecessors of Petra as chairman. Um, my judging criteria is actually, can you surprise us? Uh, out of the box. And the surpri uh, surprising can also be the presentation we had a winner in one of the years previous who had actually from one point of view and not technically not a really uh, best presentation until I discovered that he was standing in front of the hospital because his wife was in labor and he just skipped out. So if you are able to have such a kind of circumstance, well, then you have my points. And of course, all other criteria are there, but don't take it too seriously from engineering or environmental or whatever point. Just make it very ori uh, yeah, original and uh, out of the box. So it's uh, quite a challenge in 12 days. So once you have had enough beers, which we drink normally at the bar, then you have the bright idea. Well, that uh, surprise us. That would be nice. Thank you. And um, I think you touched on it a bit there. Um, but um, the criteria, uh, we have five themes. And um, so the first one that you said there was innovation. That's how creative are your solutions? Um, what novel novel techniques have you suggested? Also, the second one is presentation. So how engaging or unusual is your presentation? So I think we suggested in the past that you can do it through the medium of dance or mime, if you wish to. I don't think we've ever had anyone enter with those formats. Um, but yeah, I think those that's a key thing that the judges will be looking for. Um, the third criteria is uh, sustainability. So what impact do your ideas have on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and um, the net biodiversity of the site? Uh, the fourth one is persuasiveness. So you need the ability to convince the engineers, the politicians and the ecologists in the room. And the final one is feasibility. So how credible and feasible are your ideas to deliver? Um, I don't know if we want to open up the floor for questions. Uh, has anyone got anything they'd like to ask our judging panel? Any hands? No? Oh, yeah, go ahead. I can't see who it is, but. Can I go ahead? Yes. Hi. Well, thank you for for this invitation and this nice um, idea of a project. My name is Ida and I'm calling from the Netherlands, from Rotterdam. I had a question about the sustainable development goals because in the email it was written that it would be beneficial to maybe incorporate more goals than only uh, biodiversity on land. And I saw in the goals that there are also like goals very adjacent to it. So like... Um, so uh, biodiversity on, in water and also adaptive infrastructure. And I wondered like for the other goals, those are more far-fetched maybe, are there any uh, scoring criteria if you also incorporate uh, more far-fetched goals or how do you, what's your look toward it? 
I, I'm happy to answer that or uh, contribute to it. I, as far as I'm concerned, if you're if you're designing something that achieves a greater number of, of those UN SDGs, then that's going to work for me. So uh, the, the more you can deliver as part of a scheme, the better. But uh, I think we were we were conscious of the fact that it's a it's a tall order to achieve all of those UN SDGs within within the time that you've got and within the scheme that you might propose. So mm -hmm. I, I think we kind of gave you the opportunity to to focus on one or two or three, whatever works for you, really. But yeah, from a sustainability perspective, the more you can achieve in the delivery of your proposal, the better. OK, sounds like a good challenge. And may I ask a follow up question about another part? I saw that um, the room is quite limited and I wondered like how hard those boundaries are. Are they like? I imagine that the the dike you cannot really push it around because like uh, the the room is limited on both sides. But at the at the floodplains, is there any? Is it allowed to like take more room than it's already there from the from the ecology and the river perspective? I'm happy to take that one, Danielle. Um, I think um, we're we're looking for people to think uh, outside of the the standard way of um, uh, approaching this. Um, so if you think that there would be benefit from from sort of uh, looking outside of the the normal footprint um, of the of the defence, then that's that's you know sort of there for you to to consider. Um, I think there's some of the information provided which would give you some indications of what's surrounding. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully, yeah, just try and think think quite differently. And we're, we're looking for those broad approaches that um, that you know might not have been thought of before. So really on that innovation um, side as well. OK, well, thank you very much. I already have a massive bunch of ideas. Thank you for now. <laughs> Marcos, I think your hand was up and you were next. Oh, so, yeah, it was in line with the question just earlier. Um, yeah, just how much room? So it wasn't made really clear. I, 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 I'm just sending it into the chat. I just wanted to, to know can can we use most of the areas which I, I, the pictures I, I posted in, or is there a limit on how much? Is it just the industrial area? Is it can can we expand on that? Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I think it was kind of answered in some way by Deborah. But if yeah, that, that's that's fine with me. Thank you. Um, ben, I think you're next. Yeah, thanks, Danielle. Um, yeah, Ben Hex from Natural Resources Wales. So I've got a couple of um, my colleagues interested in the challenge. So uh, I'll be talking with those later on. I just wanted to check. Well, is this the Darren Industrial Estate? Is a real? It's obviously it is a real industrial estate. But is this a real problem that the EA are facing now, or is this kind of a theoretical problem um, for the Darren Industrial Estate? probably doesn't make much difference to the challenge but it's just kind of interesting the context because i think previous years the challenge has been more theoretical um and and this almost with this being real this almost makes it a little bit harder as well which is you know it's really good so do you want to take that danielle or do you want me to pick that up um, I'm happy for you to pick it up, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it is it is um obviously real location and an area that we know that we've got to do some works in the future. So it's been a, identified by our Thames Estuary uh, team. Uh, so we know it's an issue for the short to medium term. Um, so it is, you know, and it is somewhere that um, as part of the Kring visit, uh, this year we will be going past this location uh, on a boat trip or I think that's the intention at the moment so uh, we wanted to pick somewhere that uh, you know we'd be able to sort of bring those ideas to, to life um, as part of the visit but yeah a real a real place with real issues and long-term flood risk management issues. Thank you Deborah.
I can't see any more hands at the moment. Um, just to talk about a bit of the logistics of the challenge. So um, the deadline um, is we're, is the 20th of May at midnight. So you've got about three weeks from now to prepare. Um, and then the day of the actual challenge itself is uh, the Tuesday, the 28th of May. Um, so that's when pitch your ideas, receive feedback from the judging panel who will decide and score the winners um, on the call. And then the Korean conference itself this year is on the 22nd of September um, to the 24th in London. So those are the dates for your diary. Save those dates. <laughs> Have we got any more questions that people would like to ask? Just if people have questions in the meantime, Danielle, what's the, the process if they've if they've or people that are watching this on the recording coming back? Is there anyone anyone that they can get in touch with for a bit more information? Yeah, if um, any questions that people have, they can send them through to me um, and then I can forward it on circulate circulate it to the judging panel. That's that's fine. Brilliant. You just spread the words, everybody. If you know, you do know any colleague, young colleague who would be interested, then uh, do not hesitate to forward this meeting or to forward the challenge, I would say. Yeah, the more people we can get talking about coastal engineering, the better. Always, always. Yeah. Ben has uh, raised the hand. Also. Just, yeah, I guess just slight logistics questions, I suppose, in terms of the actual final. Um, is about is it about an hour and a half the final is running for and you need to get through I, I don't know how many um will come through but I guess in that kind of people need to divide their time accordingly so they're not trying to deliver a half an hour presentation on powerpoint or half an hour dance um, half an hour dance maybe <laughs> They, they would win with that, no matter what the message would be. Would yeah. <laughs> well, last year's we had, I think, a, a limited time of two to five minutes. It's like pitch like, very short presentation. So, not too much, so that everybody has plenty of time. But if you have little of less people sending in, that you can have more time. Or if you have more, a little bit less. If we yeah. decide that maybe perhaps the next the week before it will be very helpful if people will send in in time because it will also give the judges time uh, and the possibility to suggest uh, some improvements for your pitch so that's it's not only just that you want to see what you're doing it's also to help you improve your your pitch yeah. and then we will come decided. up with final two minutes three minutes five minutes maximum i don't know it'll yeah. be something like that yeah and there needs to be time for some questions at the end of each one as well, doesn't there, from the judges? So. Of course, of course. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And I think last time we had questions from the judges and questions from um, uh, everybody that was on the call as well. So uh, uh, all of those that were presenting were able to ask questions around the other, um, all the other presentations as well. Yeah. How much time did we do last year, Deborah? Do you remember? Was it five minutes or ten? Just. I think we did. Three minutes presentation and then about a further five minutes or so of questions. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. So, we're not so, we're yeah. not looking to, not looking to catch people out. It's about just exploring and sort of getting a bit more depth and information around around the presentation. So quite a, an informal um, question and answer session afterwards. It's very cring like. Very as, cring like. Yeah. As informal as possible. <laughs> Mostly to get people involved, yes, yeah. and inspired by some new ideas, yeah. Looking at you, Daniel. Okay. Um, have we got any more potential questions? Anyone want to ask anything about the logistics of how it works? No. Oh, well, I guess I look forward to seeing everyone's entries. Good luck with your preparations. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you on the 28th of May for the finals. Thank you.
Thanks. Bye -bye. Thanks, Thanks everyone. So. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.